Who's up for a room tour? All right, so a few people have asked me to, uh, you know, what does your room look like, your man cave? I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube of people's man caves, so I said, yeah, why not? And uh, the, the room's always changing. Uh, it doesn't It doesn't remain the same at all. It doesn't last this way very long. So as I go through big changes, I'll probably do more of these kind of videos. But for now, for today, here's the setup. All right, guys, and here's where we're going to start our adventure. I know this is a comic channel, but I'm a big sports fan and a diehard Yankee fan. So we have here a big Derek Jeter signed picture across from another Derek Jeter signed picture. And we're going to head in. So first thing you see is all my sports stuff. Got a big Lou Gehrig, Mickey Mantle, and then Sandman, Mariano Rivera, greatest closer of all time. Move into here and take a look at some of the sports stuff. So on the top shelf, I have Mattingly, Gehrig, two of my favorite Yankees of all time. A Mattingly signed ball, bobblehead, and his rookie card. We're going to slide down here to some more statues, some Danbury Mints. DiMaggio, Ruth, Mantle, and a Steve Carlton signed ball. Come down a little farther. My boys, Jeter and Mo, And that ball back there is uh, a Yankee anniversary ball signed like 20-something times by all different guys. I don't remember who's on there. But you can see just on the top there, John Wetland, Mariano Rivera, Bobby Mercer, and Goose Gossage. That's just on there. Some more on the sides. Down here, DiMaggio, that's signed... Uh, those paint chips, is, uh, those are actually uh, paint taken off the wall at the old Yankee Stadium. And then from left to right, we have Ernie Banks, Don Larson, who just passed away, and Willie Mays signed ball. That Yankee ball actually in the middle is uh, signed by the three perfect game pitchers, David Wells, Don Larson, and David Cohn. Now let's come back up here. Some Jeter stuff, one of my favorite modern-day Yankees, a Jeter signed. Ooh, let's hold on. Here we go. That's better. Uh, Derek Jeter signed number two of two Spectrum. That's Jeter's big rookie card. Jeter signed World Series ball from 1999. Uh, Jeter and Mattingly duel. Let's see if we can focus in here. That glare is tough, but uh, dual jersey. Mattingly is my favorite Yankee of all time. Mantle signed ball, mantle card, slide down, some more Jeter stuff, and then A-Rod. Say what you will, but I love A-Rod. I don't care. With an Albert Pujols and Cal Ripken Jr. signed ball. And that's uh, A-Rod's big rookie card there on the left. And then I'm also a New York Rangers fan. So up the middle here on the helmet, it's actually a Mike Richter and Henrik Lundqvist signed mask. That's uh, Wayne Gretzky signed card, 78 of 100. A little replica cup. This is an old bottle opener that I stole from a friend. Look at this. Pretty cool. Heavy as hell. Uh, this is a Marc Messier signed 1994 Stanley Cup Champions puck. Down here we have a Brian Leach signed ball, or signed ball, signed glove, as well as a Henrik Lundqvist rookie jersey card. Let's move on to some other stuff. All right, now we're going to move over here. To my Yankee Stadium chairs. I told the guy, too, look, if you can't get me three and four, I'm not buying them. So he hooked it up. He got me three and four. How can I complain? Right? Uh, number three, Babe Ruth wore number three and Lou Gehrig wore number four for you non-sport guys or non-Yankee fans. So let's start at the top here. Some Jason Fabic original art. I met him at Terrificon a couple years ago. Probably one of the nicest guys I ever met. Nice Thor Bowen statue, which uh, is kind of... At a place of sorts. Joe Sinnott Thor. I got this for $100 from him back in 2015. Just. He's just oh, he's a classic, classic artist. And, you know, well, if you know what that is, good for you. Joe Giella Batman. I met him at a bunch of shows. R another really nice guy. Probably the oldest at this point. The oldest living Batman artist. Come down here. A couple of Skeletor and He-Man Glass. Now. Let's come over here on the left. Let's get rid of the glare. Some Batman black and whites. Some Batman black and whites. I collect the black and whites. 
some are better than others, but, you know, I'm a completist, man. Some more black and whites. And even more. So there's 16 just in this cabinet. Now, whew, cabinet number two. Let's get this open. Uh, back there you have a Neil Adams Batman 251. Probably, God, one of the most iconic Batman covers. Probably one of the top two. Maybe the top one Neil Adams cover. Um, this is probably one of my favorite Batman black and white statues, which is uh, the Lee Bermeo Joker. We're going to come down here, and this is probably one of my favorite modern covers. This is Jock's Detective Comics 880, 9.8, because if you've watched any of my videos, you know how I feel. Any moderns need to be 9.8. Come down some more. Batman 181, that's the first appearance of Poison Ivy to go with the Poison Ivy statue, which I have to get out of there. I wish they would do a Poison Ivy black and white, because obviously it'll go there. That crappy Harley statue. Some more black and whites down here. Uh, that's Teen Titans 12. That's the first Batman who laughs in a 9.8 because it's a modern book. You know, you know, you know, some more black and whites coming up, coming in. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Batman 155 is the first silver age penguin. And this is just a classic Neil Adams cover to go with the Sylvester black and white. I know some of my Batman stuff's graded, some of it's not. It's just, honestly, it's just laziness on my part. I need to just clean them, press them, and send them out. On the left, you have the first League of Assassins, and on the right, you have the first Silver Age Clayface to go with the Harley statue. This is probably the best Harley statue. I mean, it's the Bruce Tim from the animated series. Got to be the best one. Best Harley, at least. Coming down some more, a few more. This is actually the Jock. Bat Batman black and white right here. And tucked over, right, tucked over here in the corner, Batman 47. A highly restored Batman 47, which is the first uh, uh, detailed origin of Batman. Let's come down here to the bottom. Uh, that's the origin of the Batman who laughs. I just like the cover. Uh, some more black and whites. A Batarang. As you can tell, I'm a Batman fan. And then back here... We have a Tom King original sketch. Just a real grail of a piece. All right, now we're going to come across and hit up some of these big boy statues. Here's the Battle Cat from Pop Culture Shock. Here's the Orko from Sideshow Collectibles. And then He-Man again from Pop Culture Shock. I had to buy the He-Man with the Battle Cat. I only wanted Battle Cat, but at the time you had to buy them as a package. The eyes light up. This is one of my favorite statues I own. And I'll tell you, I'm not going to lie. The Orko is really cool too. If you're a He-Man guy. Very detailed. I love the way the smoke is all coming up and giving them that floating effect. Looks great. And then He-Man has furry underwear. So I don't know. Check out some of my trades. Come down here. Again, some Batman stuff. Thor, God of Thunder, one through four. And Walking Dead, I have to pick up Compendium number four. Um, we can pan across this way. Just a switch. The Batman PS4, Xbox One. No big deal. Down here, some Omnis. All Jeff Johns Green Lanterns, Jeff Johns Aquaman, and the He-Man Omni. And then the New 52 Volume 1, Capullo Snyder. And I think just some staples here. Killing Joke, you have to have Killing Joke. Uh, Batman Hush is in there. Some stuff I could probably get rid of. I have Blackest Night in the Omnis. I don't really need it there. Oh, the Brian Azarello and Libra Mayo Joker. That's a great story. Uh, let's see what else we have. Oh, Game of Thrones stuff, which is great. If uh, The books are, are outstanding. And some Zelda and He-Man stuff to go along with some Star Wars stuff. And some strategy guides, which is, which is uh, kind of weird. Moving up here. Another big boy statue, the Pop Culture Shock Skeletor, to go with another Joe Sinnott piece. This is uh, Loki. So he charged me 100 bucks for Thor back in 2015. The man charged me $100 for Loki in 2019. So I have two matching pieces for $100 a piece. They're awesome. Just great pieces. I don't remember who did this Joker, but I love it. I absolutely love it. 
And this is just a cookie jar, but he's cool. Let's start getting into these cabinets right here. You have the first Ra's al Ghul on the right and the first Talia on the left. Man Bat, and that's a Neil Adams black and white. Start getting into some modern and silver stuff. So that on your right is the first Silver Age Catwoman. And on your left is probably one of the best Catwoman covers. It's an Adam Hughes modern book, 9.8. Got to be to go with the black, black and white Catwoman. Coming down, another 9.8. This is a modern variant by Greg Horn, Scarecrow. And on the left there, sorry about the glare, guys. Uh, that is the first Silver Age Scarecrow to go with his black and white statue. And this is an Ethan Van Skyver black and Batman black and white. Come down to the bottom, some Neil Adams. Uh, on your left is the uh, cover swipe from the early tech, I think issue 31. And on the right is the first Silver Age Two-Face. And a couple more Batman black and whites. The one on the right is broken, and uh, so is my heart. All right, coming down now, the center cabinet. This is Batman's 16 first appearance of Alfred in a 7.0 white pages. There's only 12 higher in the census. Some more black and whites. Come down some more. This right here, Batman number one from the New 52. Get rid of that glare. Uh, that's triple signed, Capullo, Snyder, Glapion. That is one of my first books I ever got signed, ever got graded, ever dealt with CGC. And it happened to hit a 9.8. And then all three of these Batman black and whites are all Capullos. You have Batman Who Laughs, Joker, and Batman. Come down. Two first Batgirls. One better than the next. And I actually do like the Batgirl statue on the right. The Bruce Timm. But I do love the animated series. Who doesn't love the Batman animated series, right? And then come down to the bottom here. First, Nightwing on the back right. Again, 9.8. It's a modern. To go with the first night, well, Nightwing black and white, which I believe is a Jim Lee. Damien over here on the left, and then Joker in the back. All right, so I, so I do have an empty cabinet right here for some future black and whites, as well as the first... Mr. Freeze, first Man Bat, and first Silver Age Riddler. Just a few of the Batman Rogue keys that I don't have yet. Up top, Batman shelf with a little Venom and a little Batman on there. The NECA Turtles. And then coming down here. So He-Man stuff we got there in the back. My only non-9.8 modern. First He-Man and Skeletor in comics. Back corner, you have the tweeter head, He-Man bust. That's an original man at arms and He-Man coming down. That is not a first print. Turtles number one, third print with another tweeter head bust. That's Skeletor with the original uh, Raphael Michelangelo. And then this is just a Super 7 She-Ra. I actually picked it up at New York Comic Con. Coming down, another Turtles book. Just a cover. I just love this cover. This is a first print. This is number four. And then uh, some toys. The two on the ends, the Stratos and the Merman. Those are like of the new generation He-Man toys. The more, a little more expensive and detailed. The Whiplash and Tila are original. And I have Whiplash's staff. I don't know where it is. I know it's in this house somewhere. My daughter was playing with him and lost the staff. Now in the back is an original Hordak in the original box case with the bubble everything beautiful condition really happy i picked that up and come down to the bottom here we have Raphael number one which is the first casey jones the he-man and the skeletor there those are from super seven and then we have donnie and leo All right let's move let's move over this way now so if you didn't know i'm a big pearl jam fan I have Pearl Jam posters for every single show I've been to. So those are three shows right there. Actually, that center one is from Hartford, Connecticut. That's my first Pearl Jam show. Madison Square Garden up on the right. And up on the left, I believe this is from the Central Park show um, in New York City. Now let's move over here to the right. And... My green lantern cabinet so we have the cabinet or the uh, lantern on top and let's open this so we don't get the glare scrolling down here 
They were the first uh, Hal Jordan back there in a 3.0. First Guy Gardner, Green Lantern statue, and then a little Guy Gardner pop. I don't have a lot of pops. I don't collect pops. I just come across them every once in a while. And down here you have the first Sinestro in the 6.5. First John Stewart, little Green Lantern toy. And then the first Black Hand, Silver Age Black Hand. Come down here and you have probably one of the most underrated modern books, in my opinion, in a 9.8. That's Green Lantern 25. That's the first appearance of Larflees and Atrocitus. And that's actually, I believe, the 1 in 10 variant. Um, I believe... Oh, it says it on the label. Yeah, Gary Frank did that one. There's another cover, too, the, the original cover. But first appearance of Larflees and Atrocitus, I think... I think they're coming, man. I don't know. You have the HBO Green Lantern show coming soon. Not soon, but, you know, it's in the works. Uh, you got to assume Sinestro showing up. But if the season runs strong, they may tease the emotional spectrum. And then you have a whole bunch of characters that could be showing up in future episodes. Uh, right here, Green Lantern number six, the first Bronze Age book. Neil Adams cover. Some ring, a ring, a lantern. And then down here, a couple more pops, Kilowog and Chip. And uh, Green Lantern 40, which is actually the first, I believe it is the first Golden Age, Silver Age, Green Lantern meetup, as well as the origin of the Guardians. And then here to the left is the first Flash Green Lantern meetup, or team up. And then in here, you have the first Tom Array. Just kind of sticking some books in there. I, I may end up getting rid of all this. I, I haven't decided what I want to do yet with the Green Lantern stuff because I'm all, I almost have all the keys. So I don't know. Now let's move on here. Again, I told you I'm a big Pearl Jam fan. So you have, this is from the New York City, the Central Park show that I was at. This is from Brooklyn, Barclays Center. This is actually down here. 100 Pearl Jam songs all written in. If you look real close, you can see them. Those are all Pearl Jam. 100 Pearl Jam songs all written to look like that. Uh, and then this is one of my two. So the Transformers is one of my favorites. And this is one of my other favorites. This is from Madison Square Garden. This was my second Pearl Jam show. All right, now let's move on to the Thor cabinet. Breaker of Brimstone on the top. Beautiful sideshow piece. And let's come down here. And we have Journey into Mystery 83, the first appearance of Thor. Journey into Mystery 89, just classic Kirby stuff. Little Thor toys, hammer. Down here, Journey into Mystery 85, first Loki. First Heimdall, first Asgard, classic Journey into Mystery cover, some Loki toy, a Thor toy, a little Loki card, and then Silver Surfer 4, probably one of my favorite covers, John Buscema cover, another classic Journey into Mystery cover here, and the statue to go with the book. That Journey into Mystery, I started it, or I'm sorry, the Silver Surfer 4 I actually started with like a 5-0 or a 6-0 and just worked my way up to an 8. I mean, sometimes that's how you have to do it. You don't just start off with a high grade. And of course, if the, if the right 8.5 or 9 comes around, I'm going to pick it up. Keep upgrading. That's how you do it. Come down here, you have the first Destroyer. Some more little Thor, some Beta Ray stuff. You have the first Beta Ray Bill in a 9.8. Modern. Again, it's just that damn He-Man. Just, and that's actually a newsstand, if you can see in the bottom left corner there. It's just that He-Man book that DC Comics presents. So one more shot here. And the Breaker of Brimstone. Let's come over here. We have some more Pearl Jam posters. These are all from the uh, Fenway Park show. Back-to-back, -back, uh, not back-to-back -back nights, but two shows. I actually went to both. And then some Turtles. Pop Culture Shock, Raphael and Donatello, they look outstanding next to each other. And here's what I'm currently reading, Annihilation. Yeah, Annihilation Omni. But yeah, these guys, uh, 
these guys are fantastic next to each other. And then some more Turtles and He-Man stuff. I have to finish all these hardcovers. What do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. I need seven, nine, ten, I believe, for the Turtles. He-Man, that's just a garbage. And then finally, last but not least, over here, the last of the baseball stuff since we did a full circle. That's a picture of A-Rod's, uh, was it 600th home run? Five, 500th? 500th home run with the ticket stub and him signing the picture. So just say what you will about A-Rod. I like him. And then a Rizzuto signature right there. So I'll do a quick, quick panoramic shot here. All the baseball stuff, the chairs. The original art, the cabinets, TV, Batman. You have He-Man, Skeletor, more Batman stuff. Oh, here's all my stuff from doing the videos. Pressing machines in the back right. Walking Dead rot down there from my latest pickup. Posters, posters, Thor stuff, more posters, turtles, and what I'm reading. So there you go, guys. That's the room. So that's it, guys. That's the current setup. Hopefully you liked it. If you had any ideas uh, that how I could change it or make it better, please leave a message in the comments section. I'll definitely read them. I read everything. Don't forget to hit that like. And again, this thing, all everything you saw changes quite often with new statues coming in. I'll have the Michelangelo turtle statue coming in this year. I'll also have the Batman Who Laughs statue coming in. So things are going to be moved around, changed. I have an empty cabinet. Uh, hopefully I fill it in with the books that I'm looking for uh, and then some more Batman black and whites. So guys, please hit that like button again, subscribe, uh, share the video. Um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, that would be great as well at Very Gary Comics. I should have some more content coming out often as the collections roll in, the videos roll out. So let's hope, hopefully I start getting some calls more and more and more and more. Uh, and Credit Con is in March, the end of March. That show is going to be in Fishkill, New York at the Ramada. It's a small show, but it's going to be comic book heavy. Joe Sinnott will be there and everything. So we'll, we'll get into that probably during some live shows leading up to it. So anyway, guys, thanks again, and I'll see you later.